Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick. Today I'm going to show you some of the basics of using Git. So Git is a distributed version control system and what that means is it enables you to collaborate with other people working on the same project. And you call a project in Git a repository. It's basically just a collection of files that's tracked with Git. It enables you to work remotely and one of the nice features of Git is that it's a peer-to-peer -peer or distributed version control system. And what that means is that everyone has their own copy of the repository and they can push their own changes to other people or to other places. And that means you don't have to have access to a server to be working on your changes. So even if you're somewhere that doesn't have internet you can still work on your local changes and then send them to other people when you get your internet connection back. So how do we start working with Git? Well the first thing you're going to need is a Git repository. So I'm on Windows right now and I've set up Git and I've opened up a Git bash window. So let's see some of the basics of making a Git repo. First, we'll go ahead and make a new directory. I'll call it git test. I'll go into that directory and we're going to run git init. And basically, this initializes the repository with any of the files that were in this directory. So we've got our git repository. So what can we do with that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is do git status. Git status tells us a few things about our git repository. It tells us that we are on the master branch. It would tell us the current commit that we're on, but there aren't any commits to this repository yet. And it will say there's nothing to commit because there's no files in here yet. We have a completely blank repository. So let's see if we make a file, what can we do with that? So let's make a test file, test.txt. So now we'll run git status again and it will tell us there are untracked files. The first thing you need to do is you have to make your changes. Then you add those changes into what's called a commit. A commit is a group of changes that you want to push to other people. So when you're done with your changes, you add all of your changed files and then you run commit to wrap those up, get a change log, and put your comments in there. So let's go ahead and add this file. We can do git add test.txt and now I can do git commit and it will bring up a editor so that we can write a message. So I'll write committed test change but this can be whatever you want. And if you set up your Git environment, it will be tracked by your name and your email address. So when I save that, we now have a first commit. And we can run git status, and you can see that there's nothing to commit. The working tree is clean, which means we're all good with that. And we can run git log to see the log of our changes. <coughs> So our first commit has a SHA-1 checksum. We've got the author and my email address, the date it was committed, and the log message that we put in there. We can even see the differences in files, but I'm not going to go into that right now. So that's the basics of setting up a repository, adding files, and committing. But let's say you don't want to add all the files just like that individually. You may have seven or eight different files you changed or even more and you want to add them all at once. So let's just go ahead and make a bunch of copies of test. And we can run git status and we can see there are lots of files. Why well, don't want to have to run git add for every single file so what can we do instead? We can do git add dash capital A 
and that will add all the files automatically. So we can see that there are new files and we need to commit those. So we can do git commit added more test files and you can see we're back to the working tree being clean. Everything is good. If we go to our git log it will show us going backwards in time so we've got added more test files and here's our new commit message. So that covers the basics of working with Git. We'll see more about how Git works in a future video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.